Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be talking about section 9.2, which is consumption function. And aggregate demand. Now we have to study that C A D is equal to C plus I plus G plus N X, where these two guys represent demand by firms and consumers. I is in the form of fixed assets or any assets, and C is our normal consumption. Okay. And for now, we are just keeping these two terms aside. Now, C or consumption function is often denoted as autonomous C plus C Y, where this guy autonomous C or C bar represents your consumption level. consumption level then income is zero it basically is your necessity that you re require irrespective of your income and this guy over here which is cy represents part of income that we consume and the c is called mpc which is marginal propensity to consume higher the income higher will be my mpc because if i am say a very wealthy person so i'll spend more on luxurious brands right so my mpc will be higher than compared to a real poor family where income is very low comparatively right so i will definitely spend more than them and that is why mpc depends upon your income and also c always lies in between 0 and 1 because you cannot save your entire income and neither you can consume because you will have to keep something for your future right so yes this was our consumption function over here and now we'll understand this properly with help of a diagram now when plotting graph for the same we have our x axis and y axis Our x-axis uh, represents income or output, and y-axis represents aggregate demand. Now, as I've mentioned that your C is equal to autonomous C plus C y, your C will always start with the y-intercept, okay? Because it cannot start with zero; it's never zero. It's never zero. So, say it starts from here, and our AD is just parallel to it. Okay, this is AD, AD curve, and this is your consumption function. Now you may question why are they same? Because we have learned that AD is equal to C plus I plus NX plus G. And I, from in the very beginning, I asked you to keep these terms aside for now, because we are talking about consumption, and con this is the consumption of the consumers of firms, right? So the difference, distance in between is I. and both have got the same graph uh, slope now we also have this 45 degrees line over here which is your equilibrium quantity so the point where your ad curve and ad is equal to y which is out equilibrium output curve meets that gives us equilibrium income and that gives us equilibrium demand nice okay also you have to keep in mind that ad curve or your consumption function are positively sloped right increase in uh, income is resulting in increase in demand why because they've got a positive relation as your income will increase you'll start demanding more right you'll consume more and you'll demand more and that is why they are positively sloped Now let us talk about savings. I just talk about consumption, right? You consume is equal to C plus C Y. But what about S? 
S is the part of income that is not consumed. Hence, if this Y is income and C is consumption, then our S is saving. And also I mentioned that C always belongs in between 0 and 1. Right? Now, if we substitute value of C over here, we get S is equal to Y minus C, where C is equal to C plus C Y, right? So, S is equal to Y minus autonomous C minus C Y, okay? If we take Y common and keeping autonomous C aside, we have right and that is our saving function where 1 minus c is our mps or marginal propensity to save it is part of income that you save and yes this is it for this video and the next video will be continuing the same topic thank you